EM Problems, the site dedicated to discussing and exploring common project management experiences. For more content related to project management, construction management, and general work-life balance, visit us online at solvepmproblems.com or smash those like and subscribe buttons by clicking below. Do you sometimes feel like your boss is manipulating you? Whatever you do, does it seem like it's just not good enough? Are you scrutinized over minor details while other people's mistakes never seem to get mentioned the same way? Perhaps you feel like you're being set up to fail with every passing week. If any of this sounds familiar, you could be a victim of a manipulative boss and their ill-intended tactics. Manipulative evil bosses like these do their best to create a toxic work environment. Working in toxic environments like this is what I consider a silent killer. Maybe you can relate to this feeling. The feeling sets in over time, not all at once. You start feeling less enthusiastic about your work. You start questioning your own abilities and skill. You take home a little more baggage with you each and every day. You're working more than ever to keep up, yet you feel tired and worn out. While you used to love your job, you now dread it. You feel like you're being drained of your life force one day at a time. This is the exact effect a manipulative boss is trying to have on you. Evil bosses seem to have a natural ability to create this effect. Your weaknesses and emotions are like a molding clay for this type of boss, and they're masters of the craft. Before we get into the 12 ways in which evil manipulative bosses try to manipulate their employees, here's a brief disclaimer. We are not psychologists or any kind of counselors. While we've had experience with bad bosses in our own careers, we share this content based on research and experience only. We encourage you to seek the support and care you need based on your own best judgment. Also, it's healthy to have a level of introspection even when our boss comes off wrong. We can always try to improve through self-reflection. Having said that, let's go through 12 common techniques used by manipulative bosses in the workplace, along with some tips on how to deal with each. Tactic number one, blame shifting. When your boss makes a mistake, misjudges the situation, or acts inappropriately, do they turn around and blame it all on you? Welcome to the club, you've been blame shifted. Bosses who blame shift are unwilling to accept responsibility. As a result, they're never wrong. This does not bode well for employees, as you can imagine. A blame shifting boss will either accuse you of making a mistake to your face, or will work behind the scenes to pin it on you. So here are a few techniques you can use to protect against blame shifting. Document everything regularly. Provide updates to your boss and your team as often as you can, and in writing whenever possible. Whenever you're confused about your responsibilities or assignment, email your boss asking for clarification. If you discuss this in person, follow up with a written summary. The more you have on record, the less will be able to be blamed on you later. Tactic number two, being overly critical of employees. Does it feel like you're working under a microscope? Does your boss seem to find fault in everything that you do? Are you singled out in front of your coworkers over even the smallest of issues? Your boss might be criticizing your work so heavily on purpose. While a healthy amount of introspection is good for you, there comes a point when you realize that your manipulative boss is just being petty. Their overly critical nature could be coming from a few different places. Your boss could be jealous of you and is trying to bring you down. Your boss might be overly sensitive to criticism themselves and are criticizing you defensively in their minds. Or they might just not like you for their own reasons. So here are a few ways you can defend yourself the next time you get unnecessary criticism. Firstly, send your boss rough drafts and outlines for approval. This keeps your boss involved in the process from the beginning and reduces the chances that they'll be overly critical of this work later. They have their own reputation on the line after all. Drafts take a mere fraction of the time to produce compared to a final version, so you'll save yourself time in the process as well. Ask your boss for specific ways in which you can improve when they're criticizing you. If they have nothing good to say, it shows that their intent was petty from the beginning. Lastly, make sure you plan ahead with your work. Keeping your boss informed about the details of what you're working on will prevent them from being a Monday morning quarterback or blaming you after the fact later on. Tactic number three, making the rules but not following them. Do as I say, but not as I do, your boss may say. This is a cornerstone mentality of a bad boss. These bosses know they have the power to make the rules at work and they get to act as a judge, jury, and executioner when someone steps out of line. As a result, they use these rules as a sword and a shield that is, something they hide behind themselves, but they can also use against you later on. Who could ever punish your boss if their boss never knows about it? Here are a few ways you can defend yourself against tactics like these. If the rule is truly silly, speak to your boss about how it's negatively impacting the business. 
If there's no good reason for this rule, don't look foolish for enforcing a rule that just takes away from the end goal. Also, know your rights. Just because your boss says it doesn't mean it's correct. Lastly, you can call them out under one-sided hypocrisy. This is tricky, so tread carefully. If they blatantly break a rule, a good boss will acknowledge it and make an example out of themselves. A bad boss, on the other hand, will reveal their true nature. Tactic number four, moving the goalpost. Your boss gives you an assignment and you happen to get it done exactly as I asked you to. When you turn it in, however, you're greeted with a strange reason as to why your work is not actually satisfactory. As it turns out, your boss changed the rules of the assignment. You just didn't know it. In other words, the goalpost has been moved. This is something manipulative bosses do to keep you off balance and deem you less than satisfactory, even when they have no real reason to do so. That said, here are a few ways you can defend yourself. First off, make sure to keep good documentation. When you're given an assignment or goal, I recommend that you email your boss with a summary of what was discussed after the fact. Make sure to defend yourself as well. There's no need to own up to something you didn't do wrong. Another tip is to be willing to walk away as much as you can. Manipulative bosses are not stupid. If they need you, they will negotiate. Lastly, know your worth and don't settle for being treated unfairly. Tactic number five, strategically putting obstacles in your path. Do you often find yourself participating in boring, time-wasting processes or sitting through pointless meetings, yet you can never seem to get your actual work done? There's a chance this is done on purpose to sabotage your work. Although these meetings and processes will be deemed as super important, you know the truth. A manipulative boss knows full well that they're in charge of all your assignments at work. If they don't want you to succeed, it's easy to throw you off track by giving you more work, taking up your time, and extracting your resources. That said, here are a few ways you could defend yourself. If there's an obstacle put in your path, let your boss know right away, ideally in writing. Ask them how you should proceed given the variables at play. As the boss, they're responsible for telling you how to move forward. By using these techniques, you're effectively negotiating over, around, or even underneath the obstacles your boss is trying to throw in your path. Tactic number six, intimidation. Do you feel like you're walking on eggshells at work? Is your boss known to threaten people with talks of downsizing, demotions, no raises, or other similar threats? Does your boss grill you or your coworkers in front of everybody in order to scare the whole group? Your bad boss has gone full Neanderthal on you. They're turning to primitive and fear-based tactics to keep the staff in line. Here's what you can do to defend yourself against intimidation. First and foremost, you must report unprofessional behavior to your HR department immediately. Do not wait. This includes providing evidence of their behavior in writing if possible. You need to also be brave. It's all right to feel fear or anxiety in these moments, but you still must defend yourself. You don't need to be unprofessional either. You just need to be honest. If all else fails, start making plans to look elsewhere for work. Life is way too short to spend your days living in fear at work. It's just not worth it. Tactic number seven, avoiding the issue. Whenever there's a problem, is your boss nowhere to be found? When you raise a concern, does it disappear into the ether? Are obvious issues just never dealt with? Your manipulative boss knows exactly what they're doing. By avoiding the issue, they're effectively living with blinders on, hoping the problem works itself out, or will just blame it on somebody else later. Here are a few ways you can defend yourself against this avoidance. Schedule every meeting in writing through email using Google, Outlook, or other similar type of programs. This way, they cannot say they didn't know. This includes every type of meeting, from performance reviews, raise discussions, internal logistics, issues, you name it. Another good tactic is to bring up issues and problems in front of the group. Chances are, they'll either see your point of view, or even feel the same way already. This extra bit of pressure might be just what is needed to get your boss to finally make a decision on the issue at hand. Lastly, make sure to produce a written agenda for all meetings, as well as minutes following these meetings. Good record keeping makes it almost impossible for bosses to avoid issues forever. Tactic number eight, two-faced behavior. Does your boss trash talk your coworkers in front of you? Do they act like your friend in some scenarios but your enemy in others? Your evil boss is just playing whatever cards they have in the moment. They'll talk about others to you and they'll talk about you to others. They'll sweet talk you to gain your trust or to convince you to do something and then they'll embarrass you for any number of other reasons. A two-faced boss is not one that can be trusted, ever. Here's what you can do to defend yourself against them. Stay as far away from your boss as possible when they're gossiping. Do not participate or you could become culpable. Do not trust them, ever. Treat them as such as well. 
It's always a good idea to document everything possible and discuss issues in group settings to prevent this manipulation from affecting people's work. And generally speaking, it's a good idea to spend as little time around bosses like these as humanly possible. Tactic number nine, slanting the narrative. Consider this quote from Orwell's 1984. Who controls the past controls the future, and who controls the present controls the past. In the same way that major news networks introduce a slant or bias into their narrative to influence your point of view, so does your evil boss. A good manipulator knows exactly what to say, when to say it, and who to say it to in order to write their own version of history in even the most subtle ways. This is particularly difficult to pinpoint because a lot of it comes through framing statements in a certain way during a larger conversation. Sort of like tracking a little bit of mud into the house every day. Before you know it, the place is a mess, but the dirt didn't just show up overnight. Your boss suddenly does this a little bit at a time. A few examples of slanting the narrative could include making implications about a person in a larger conversation without actually saying something about them. Such as, I tried calling her last week, but she never called me back. This frames the boss as the hero, when in reality nobody knows the details but the other person and your boss. Many of these comments are meant to send a message, but are too small to actually address head on in that moment, so people move on. And yes, your boss knows this. So here are a few ways you can defend yourself. You can address the petty stuff as it happens. And it will feel petty. But we must nip these things in the bud sometimes. Your boss can't expect to sprinkle in their slants forever. They need to feel like it won't be worth it, or they'll be called out in the process. If you have several written examples of this, you could show them to HR, upper management, or anybody else who's involved in the situation. These slanted comments can be easier to spot when there's a larger pattern playing out. In any situation, a lack of professionalism helps no one. Tactic number 10, playing the biggest victim of them all. It's a classic manipulation tactic. Somebody screws you over, and then they make you feel bad about it. They convince you that you're in fact the issue, and they are the real victim here. Of course, this is on purpose. Most manipulative bosses will probably have this tool in their toolbox and use it regularly. Here's an example. If you and your team are feeling overworked and overwhelmed and address this in a meeting, your boss may turn around and start telling everybody how they're not doing enough, how your boss has to worry about everybody else's problems and worry about running the place. You and your coworkers are expected to feel guilty even if you had the problem in the first place. Whether it's done through guilt, shame, blame shifting, or a combination, your boss will frame many scenarios as if they're in fact the victim, even if the truth is obvious to everybody else. This is a difficult scenario to defend yourself against. One tip you might want to keep in mind is to frame everything as if it's to favor your boss. You need more resources so they can spend less time in meetings. You need more resources so they can get some relief. It's all done in an effort to treat your boss with kid gloves while still trying to ask for the things you really need. Tactic number 11, gaslighting. Gaslighting is like a combination of blame shifting and slanting the narrative, along with a bit of brainwashing, doubt, and questioning your memory for good measure. You could have sworn that your boss gave you a due date a Friday for the assignment, but Thursday morning, they're asking you why you're not done. I specifically said it was due by today, they say, but you just know that wasn't the case. Perhaps you remember discussing a certain topic with your boss, but they claim you never actually brought it up. I know I'd remember hearing something like that, they say. They speak with so much conviction and confidence that everybody else just assumes they're correct. This process of making you question yourself is called gaslighting. So here's what you can do to defend yourself. The best solution is preventative. Good work practices like regular meetings with agendas and minutes, keeping a schedule, updating your team with status reports, and staying organized will leave your boss very little room to use this trick. Not only will this keep your bad boss at bay, but it'll help you work more efficiently as well. Tactic number 12, interrupting your personal life. A truly manipulative boss will try and interfere with your personal life. This is absolutely not okay in any company or organization and should be reported to human resources or whoever else is applicable right away, especially if you have proof in writing. These bosses are the ones who just take it one step further. Many manipulative bosses know they're the boss of the office and exercise this power whenever possible. That's bad enough. But when your boss wants to mess up your life outside of work, that's another level of concerning. So here's what you can do to defend yourself. We've covered a lot in this article. Most of the above items will work here, but most importantly, do not tolerate your manipulative boss after hours. As soon as you let it go once, it'll happen again and again and again. Trust me. Report unnecessary and over-the-line incidents to the HR department as soon as you can. 
before we wrap up, here are a few additional tips you can use to deal with and cope with your manipulative boss. Make time for yourself after work to rest, relax, and keep your life in balance. We sound like a broken record, but document as much as you can. Make sure you keep detailed records of assignments, conversations, issues, and updates as they happen, ideally in email form. This ensures that your hard work and problems alike are well documented in the event they get brought up later. Don't keep it to yourself. Talk about your problems to a friend, family member, partner, or even a professional. We all need support sometimes. If you're experiencing anxiety or depression, seek out the appropriate help. Don't wait. Lastly, speak your mind. Don't hold things in. Address issues head on in the moment to make sure they're dealt with. As long as you do so in a professional and constructive way, you're simply standing your ground and speaking your truth. And that wraps up our list of 12 ways bosses will attempt to manipulate their employees. To read the full article on our website and hear about some personal experiences I've had with a manipulative boss, click the link in the description below. Thanks for watching. For more content related to project management, construction management, and general work life balance, visit us online at solvepmproblems.com or smash those like and subscribe buttons by clicking below.